Hey guys, as I was doing my better C Sharp series, I got a little bit of interest in my setup for editing uh, files. And so I just wanted to do a quick video about that. So I'm using NeoVim, a hyper extensible Vim based text editor. Uh, Vim is a modal text editor, so you have different modes. We're in normal mode right now, you can see at the bottom left. Um, this is insert mode where you're typing. Normal mode is for moving around. Um, and the way you move around in Vim is like with uh, motions. And motions can be a bunch of different things. The important thing about Vim is that words are kind of treated as objects. Um, and not just words. There's like paragraphs and lines and different things. So you can like use motions to navigate objects, basically. So if I wanted to go two words up, there you go. I'm two words up. If I wanted to go ten lines up, I can go ten lines up. Um, so you can like combine numbers with motions, uh, like motions are like H, J, K, L to move around. And then like W is a word, uh, B is back a word. Uh, what else? Uh, you can go to the top with double G, you can go to the bottom with capital G. So those are motions. And then you can do things with motions. So you can like have commands that you do with motions. So like, uh, like change inside word to change a word, for instance. Um, you can change a paragraph, which is like a group of lines that are all touching, um, which is kind of weird. Uh, you probably don't use that one much in code. <laughs> uh, you can change like inside curly brackets or inside a string or inside uh, parentheses. So all of those are like useful motions that are like super awesome. Um, I think mainly though, like the idea is that you can navigate around super fast using your hands without taking them away from your keyboard and the motions like get super like ingrained in your brain. And it's kind of like a game. It's made editing really fun for me. Um, I've been using it about three years and I, I don't think I'll ever go back. Um, and even in other editors like VS Code, there are Vim bindings you can get. Uh, so it's like the same thing. Um, you know, down up with HJKL, uh, change inside curly brackets or change inside a string, you know, stuff like that. So I'll always use Vim key bindings no matter what editor I'm in. Um, but, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, so but Vim by itself is just like uh, Visual Studio Code with no plugins, like it doesn't do anything special, it's just the text editor. So there are plugins that you can use to get uh, all sorts of features. Um, for C Sharp, the main one I use is OmniSharp Vim, which hooks up OmniSharp to Vim. And OmniSharp is a language server that provides all the nifty features uh, for C Sharp. Like, uh, it just gives like auto completion, refactoring tools, stuff like that. It's like semantically aware of a project and like all the like classes and stuff inside it. So you can plug that into Vim using OmniSharp Vim, uh, and that. This is OmniSharp Vim. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can get, you know, completion, run unit tests, um, all sorts of stuff. Find implementations, like if you want all the implementations of service collection. Uh, that's a bad example. Uh, find implementations of iConfig. There's only one, so it takes us to it. Um, what else? Of course, we want to find all the usages of add singleton or add what's collection I don't, or singleton. That's weird that it goes out like that, but uh, anyway, um, all the usages of I can pick, maybe. Yeah, that's a better example. Uh, I can run tests for you. It can do things like if you wanted to, um, you wanted to bring in a using that you don't have, you can use it to do that. Uh, so you down there at the lot, bottom left, using system collections generic. Um, it can do things like, you know, extract a method. It can do uh, renaming, uh, add some stuff or whatever. Uh, so it does all that kind of stuff, all your normal like IDE type stuff uh, for C Sharp specifically. Um, and so up there on line 31 above us right here, unnecessary using directive, this leads us into the ALE, asynchronous lint engine, uh, which uses OmniSharp as well, um, uh, among other ways to provide linting. So normally it's like in the bottom left, like it shows right here. Uh, so like you, you move your cursor over a line with an error and it'll like show you what the error is. 
I have it set up to show right there in the buffer using, I guess it's virtual text objects from NeoVim. I don't think Vim has that uh, right now, but NeoVim does, and so that's super useful. Um, what else? We have a uh, fuzzy finder, FZF. Um, so FZF is actually a command line utility. So FZF. And what that is is like, you can feed stuff into FZF and then it'll like let you use kind of fuzzy finding. So if I wanted to go to music, like that's, you get back out of it to standard out whatever the result is. And FZF Vim hooks up FZF to Vim. And so you kind of see like a pattern here where you're like there's a command line utility or a server or something and it runs by itself and there's like a adapter that hooks it up to Vim. So that's a very common pattern. Uh, so yeah, FCF Vim, you can use it to get around like a uh, like log writer. And you can see there's like a preview over there on the left. I think there's some way to make that go down. I don't know. There's probably a hotkey for it, but... Uh, yeah, you hit enter and you get there. So that's fuzzy finding um, with FCF. Uh, nerd tree, I use nerd tree as well. This is kind of like a tree view for whatever folder you opened up them in. So it's super useful as well uh, to be able to see like what's going on in your in your project, and also a decent way to get around. I use FCF as much as I can because it's faster. Um, what else? Uh, oh, Vim Spectre. So this is a D a way to hook up a debugger to Vim. And so just like OmniSharp is a provider of language servers using like there's language server protocol which OmniSharp implements to provide like all the cool stuff for C Sharp. There's also a debug adapter protocol that like provides debugging stuff for different languages. Um, one of those is C Sharp. C Sharp .NET Core does work. Um, Samsung has a .NET Core debugger that hooks up to this thing. You don't have to worry about that. Um, when you install it, it, it has like installation instructions. You don't have to like worry about any of that stuff. You just install it and it works. Um, but anyway, it hooks up to that using that debug adapter protocol. And you can kind of see if we go to program.cs, um, it lets you set uh, like breakpoints and stuff. So let's not set one there. Let's set one in here. Um, and then you can F5 and run uh, if you have your hotkeys set up that way. And then, you know, you get all your cool stepping and stuff. Oh, I have modified this since the last time we ran. Uh, so I should have built before doing that. But you still get like your locals. You can like look at local values and stuff like that. Uh, so all your debugging needs are there. Um, pretty cool. Um, it has like an output terminal down there. It's got the stack trace down there on the bottom left. You can watch variables right there in the middle left. Uh, and I'm pretty new to this, so there's probably even more stuff that I don't know yet. Yeah, so that's Vim Spectre. So that's how you can get debugging. And that, like, I just recently got that, and it has been a game changer because... I usually had to like open up Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio to do debugging, and that's super annoying. So I think at this point, I feel like Vim can be a full-blown uh, editing experience for C Sharp, and you're not like missing anything uh, personally. <clears throat> but like I said, you can get Vim key bindings in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code as well. So if you're more comfortable there, by all means, you know, if you want to check that out, check that out. So. Uh, I think that just about covers it. I guess I will go into my VimRC. Uh, let's see, I think I had it open. Yeah, buffer one. This is my VimRC. It kind of like sets up all of your settings for Vim. And like, this is how you get your plugins and whatnot. You just put them in here. There's like settings for those plugins. Uh, I'll just leave a link to mine. I keep it in source control because I have it split across three different computers and I don't want to have to like copy and paste it. So. Uh, so yeah, it's in source control. I'll leave a link to that. I think I have it pulled up. Yeah, so this is it. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So if you guys have any questions about it, though, feel free to ask. Um, and uh, yeah, so I hope this has helped, and I hope you guys will check out Vim. It's super awesome. Yeah, if that, uh, if that helps, feel free to drop a like and maybe uh, subscribe if you're interested in the kind of stuff I'm doing here on the channel. So thanks for watching.